Good afternoon, this is Sean Golding with Golding & Golding, here to discuss what is a FATCA letter and why do bank customers receive a FATCA letter. FATCA is the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act. For foreign financial institutions and some other institutions, they have massive reporting requirements. Um, the goal is for them to report U.S. account holders to the IRS so that the IRS is updated with account holder information. It's supposed to be reciprocal between the U.S. and the foreign country they entered into the FATCA agreement with. There's about 114 of them, I believe, or 113. Whether the IRS or the U.S. government is really following up the way they said they would is up for debate, but the foreign uh, jurisdictions seem to really be reporting. From an individual perspective, it typically involves reporting a Form 8938 on your tax return. Now, one of the common questions is who's subject to FATCA? Well, FATCA is for U.S. person, so that would be a U.S. citizen by birth or naturalization, a legal permanent resident slash green card holder, or a, um, a foreign national who meets the substantial presence test. So if you're here in H-1B, L-1, E-2, E-3, uh, EB-5 even, or B-1, B-2, and uh, you meet the substantial presence test, you're considered a U.S. person, you would FATCA report. So why do people receive a FATCA letter? So generally what happens is this. The foreign financial institution is going through their roster of customers and they, uh, they have to do their exchange of information, whether it's FATCA or CRS, which is the common reporting standard. It's similar to FATCA, but it's different. The U.S. hasn't signed on to that just yet. The foreign financial institution wants the customer to certify under penalty of perjury um, that they are either a U.S. person or not a U.S. person, so the bank or institution knows what it has to report. Um, they want uh, a self-certification, oftentimes, of U.S. or non-U.S. status. The FATCA letter will normally include a W-8 Ben or a W-9. Uh, the W-9 is for U.S. persons. The W-8 is for non-U.S. persons. If you are a U.S. citizen or legal permanent resident, um, you would file the W-9, uh, as well as if you meet the substantial presence test, W-8. Um, ben would be for foreigners who don't meet the substantial presence test. Um, FATCA reporting for the individual generally includes um, specified foreign financial assets that can include many different things. Um, it can include accounts, um, investments, it can include foreign stock, foreign corporations, foreign entities. Noting that if you have you know, ownership of a foreign corporation and you have to file a 5471, let's say, or an 8865, you typically don't have to duplicate reporting on the 8938 um, in the same year for the same asset. With FATCA, unlike its uh, counterpart, the FBAR, the Form 8938 also requires the income associated with the foreign asset, so it's important to have a general idea of what the um, what the uh, interest, dividends, royalties, capital gains, things like that uh, comprise of. There are other international reporting forms as well, such as the um, the Form 3520A, the uh, 5471, 8865, um, etc. If you're not in compliance for prior years. The IRS has developed various amnesty programs that you can use to get into compliance. Um, there is the traditional voluntary disclosure program. There used to be something called OVDP, which is Offshore Voluntary Disclosure Program. Uh, that recently has been uh, terminated, but then the IRS did expand the traditional voluntary disclosure program so that individuals can use that. So when OVDP was around, people used OVDP for offshore. Now that OVDP is no longer around, the traditional voluntary disclosure is used for both OVDP, I'm sorry, for both offshore and domestic. There's also the streamlined domestic uh, offshore procedures and streamlined foreign offshore procedures. Those are both, uh, they fall underneath the category of streamlined filing compliance procedures. They have a reduced penalty, reduced reporting requirement. If you qualify for streamlined foreign, there's no penalty. There's also delinquency uh, procedures, delinquent international information return submission procedures, or delinquent FBAR submission procedures if the FBAR was your only issue, and there's also reasonable cause. Um, it's important to respond to the FATCA letter timely, and it's important not to make any intentional misrepresentations on it. Um, if you want more information about FATCA, FATCA letters, 
please visit our main website at goldinglawyers.com. We also have an international tax law blog that we try to update on issues involving FATCA and other offshore compliance. Uh, my name is Sean Golding with Golding & Golding. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.